everyone. My name is Pooja and I have completed my Masters in Medical Microbiology. And from the past 1.5 years, I have been associated with academic writing and academic research and helping students. So today we will be dis- discussing a very interesting topic which is Bipolar Affective Disorder. So to begin with, we will first discuss what exactly Bipolar Affective Disorder means and what are the signs and symptoms. So, Bipolar Affective Disorder, which is also termed as BPAD, is a severe form of depressive illness which is characterized by continuous cyclic episodes of mania and depression. Mania is a serious condition which is commonly observed in BPAD and the common symptoms include a low need for sleep and at the same time a high energy is being observed among the patients who are being affected with BPAD. There are other genetic, environmental and altered brain chemistry factors that play a key role in the prevalence of BPAD among patients. It is more often, it it more commonly occurred among the older population. There are uh, various medication as well as psychotherapies that are usually recommended among patients for the safety and well-being of the patient population. So this particular presentation will be discussing what all are the signs and symptoms of BPAD and what what is the role of the nursing in ensuring medical safety for the safety of the patients. So moving to the next slide, we'll be discussing what all are the clinical signs of BPAD. BPAD is a various serious disorder that will lead to grandiosity, elevation along with poor sleep. So these all are the main clinical signs of BPAD that is uh, present among a large population. Grandiosity is characterized by bipolar disorder that arises through the manic and hypermanic state. So there occur two conditions. One is the manic and the, as we just discussed, which is characterized by low mood and high energy and other is hypomanic state. And among 70% of the overall population who experience BPAD ex, uh, are commonly observed with manic and grandiosity. Grandiose delusions are characterized by bigger emotions of supremacy and vulnerability. The elevation is an inflated sense of one's significance, power, wisdom of personality, even if the ideas were based on pseudo evidence. So, in this condition, the patient will believe on the things that are not present in the real world. So, this is a very commonly prevalent sign among the patient population that needs to be identified early for the safety of the patient. So moving to the next slide, we'll discuss what are the symptoms of BPOD. So there are basically two types of, the symptoms can be characterized in two types. One is manic and the other is depressive. The manic is characterized by decreased need for sleep, racing thoughts, risky behavior and distractibility. Risky behavior is very often observed among the patients and can also risk the life of the human individuals so the this risky behavior na- need nature need to be identified by the healthcare professionals in order to provide the timely medication or any other psychotherapy on the other hand the depressive symptoms will be characterized by the feeling of worthlessness appetite changes where the patient might not feel uh, uh, or the, might not feel might not feel uh, appetite and it may lead to lack of nutrition and can compromise the physical health of the patients the patient is also characterized by extreme sadness and suicidal thoughts suicidal thoughts is another very commonly observed char- character in the depressive symptoms and can directly harm the patient which needs to be managed early. So moving to the next slide, the negative symptoms and risk of self-harm. As we know that these symptoms of grandiosity 
along with hypo and hyper um, grandiosity these symptoms all are associated with severe consequences majorly affecting their personal lives it also affects the cognitive and psychometer factors and consequently the patient will lose the decision making capacity and shows more rage and hyperactivity and this behavior is often not controlled by the individual as well as by other healthcare professionals even uh, in case a patient is admitted in a hospital so this rage and hyperactivity is not only causing harm to the patient but also to the other members or individuals who have been admitted in the hospital the patient will also lose the capacity to adjust behaviors and elevation makes the person less resilient according to the changing behavior extreme aggression sometimes result in self harm to overcome the negative behavior so the person who has been affected with bpd will also uh, the, the level of the negative behavior will go up to a limit that the person will start harming himself or herself and this needs to be managed by the healthcare professional so this is a reason all these negative symptoms at the end will risk the self harm so next we will be discussing how this uh, agitated behavior or we can say negative behavior among the patients can be managed prn medication is a very safe option that the medications as per recommended by the doctors when given to the patients the agitated behavior can be managed but the nurses need to consider various factors while administering this prn medication that we will discuss in this slide before administering medicines which can be antipsychotics anti zeolytics and sedatives the nurses must ensure the correct dose root and right person to prevent the adverse drug reaction in case of any doubt based on dose the nurse must first coordinate with the doctors as they are the individuals who have recommended the medicine to achieve the goal of safe medication administration at the same time prn medicines will also increase the risk for falls dehydration and infection therefore these adverse drug reactions can also be associated with polypharmacy and therefore can elevate the mental health complications so the sub optimal monitoring of the drugs is a professional ethical part of the nurses it is therefore the nurse's responsibility to evaluate the adverse drug reactions along with overdose to prevent the unnecessary patient harm so therefore prn medications should only be administered in only in case it is required and once it is administered the patient must be checked under must be checked so that to avoid any adverse drug reaction and to improve the safety of the patient so the next slide what exactly is the role of uh, of patient education and how uh, educating the patient will be done by the nurses so for that the nurses will first focus on the strength based approach to set the care goals because every individual is different and every individual has their own strengths and weaknesses so to identify the strength and assess it at before setting the goals is essential for achieving the goals at the right time verbal communication for education se- sessions is the safest mode the patient can be educated and most of the patients are being educated by ensuring verbal communication in this communication all the signs and symptoms will be discussed with the patient so that they will be able to identify all these signs and symptoms at a early time for example the manic and hypomanic episodes this uh, identification of the symptoms is essential as it will help the patient to avoid the relapse of the ppd 
डिसऑर्डर सो हाउ एजुकेशन विल हेल्प टू प्रिवेंट रिलैप्स दिस विल बी ब्रीफली डिस्कस इन दिस स्लाइड द एम ऑफ द एजुकेशन इज टू मॉडिफाई बिहेवियर बाय बूस्टिंग एंगेजमेंट मेकिंग द बेस्ट थेरापटिक चॉइसिस एंड टेक ए पॉजिटिव अप्रोच टू डिजीज एंड ट्रीटमेंट the nurse can also coordinate with any psychotherapist to arrange relapse prevention intervention by engaging psychoeducation approach providing information regarding the disease's progress rehabilitation and emotional along with cognitive work so discussing the signs and symptoms which are affecting the physical health of the individual is not only the thing that the nurses will discuss the new nurses will also discuss what all are the psychological impact of ppad and how it can impact the everyday work of the individual and can decrease the quality of their lives therefore education is very important for preventing the relapse by identifying the signs and symptoms early as well as minimum it will also help in minimizing and min- and also uh, or we can say reduce the scope for psychological health burden it will also reduce hospitalization and increased financial burden will be limited if the education will be provided to the patient at the correct time so why family engagement is essential in education will be discussed in this slide the family members will support the patient by information retention and makes the resources available to them whenever it is required by the patient it also increase family members participation in establishing a strong partnership and a clinical judgment widening their knowledge and management of disease change it will also uh, including the family members will also change the perception towards the disease by supplying them with helpful behavior management styles so moving to the next slide uh, uh, we will be discussing what this presentation will conclude we can say that bpad is a life limiting condition with many clinical signs and symptoms grandiosity and elevation decision making perceptual variety and skill coordination will all be affected due to bpad clinical decision making or we can say health related decision making capacity of the individuals who have been experiencing bpad will be lost and this is a very critical negative effect of bpad as a person will not will not be able to take better decisions for his or her health and can compromise the safety of the patients it is also related with bigger emotions of supremacy and invulnerability and therefore trigger agitated behavior it can also lead to self harm all these negative behaviors will accumulate and can trigger or increase the scope of self harm which is followed by lack of therapeutic engagement because the person will not find it beneficial to continue his medication for his safety and he will start believing in those things that are not present in the actual life this lack of therapeutic engagement will increase the health burden including both physical and psychological of the patients therefore the nurses must extend their scope of practice and advocate for patient safety the nurses with clinical decision making skills and problem solving abilities will ensure a correct drug and correct time of parent medication for the safety of the individuals so these were the references that were used to design this presentation so at then we can say that bpad is a very dangerous disorder where the individuals will lack the capacity to think and take better decisions for their health and can also trigger the condition of self harm and therefore the nurses must educate the patient and include their family members in education or uh, in education of patient so that they can take better life decisions for their safety and well being thank you and have a nice day